time for Inside the Gamecocks, the show with Phil Mullinax and J.C. Sherbert. So how many of you would say you speak English fairly well, but with some difficulty? Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. You play to win the game. Now, let's take it away, J.C. and Phil. Rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> J.C. Sherbert, inside the game, Cox, the show is certainly uh, outstanding to be sitting here talking to you guys today. I apologize for what happened. Um, signing day, uh, you guys that have followed my career know that that's a big day for me. I <laughs> uh, had a little bit of a health mishap, uh, sidelined me, prevented me from going to the bowl game and to Disney and all that stuff I kept talking about. And well, uh, the good news is it was just very high blood pressure and also um, also some, uh, some vertigo. And vertigo, of course, is terrible. Uh, it can cause you to not want to look at computer screens. Uh, I got really dizzy um, and fought that for a little bit. But, I, you know, I'm still not 100%, probably like 85%, 90%, but I feel good about getting back in the swing of things. Certainly today wasn't going to let uh, us deviate that much from the original plan, which was to you know, take it off until today. Um, <clears throat> lots to talk about. We've had a signing day come and go. There's still transfer portal activity, which is lots of fun. The Gamecocks did play in the Gator Bowl and lost an unfortunate ball game to Notre Dame, 45-38. Uh, basketball, tough overtime loss at Vandy to open the SEC season. That that could have been a good shot at victory there, Phil, but uh, was, Vandy's yeah. not all that – they're not super duper – uh, it's not only going to get tougher from here <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, in, in the SEC. Yeah. I, I don't know what Georgia necessarily looks like this year. I'm assuming they'll be better coach like White coming in. But, uh, you know, those are the teams you kind of look at. Missouri was kind of down at the bottom and rolling right now under Dennis Gates. So, shoot, man, you, you just don't know uh, where the victories are going to come from in that sport. Uh, but football is kind of still center stage. Uh, lots of talk about the transfer portal. Transfer portal additions, transfer transfer portal people going. Uh, the big news, obviously, uh, everybody's following. Will Spencer Rattler come back? Will Juice Wells come back? Uh, very big parts and pieces of the puzzle for next year. Jordan Birch is another guy to look out for in that category. Um, and this is just the way it is now. Uh, you know, I've kind of learned this. <laughs> uh, you know, not to get too high, too low, not to worry. Uh, so much about things because, you know, there are a lot of people working very hard to keep the roster intact. I believe personally that even if there may be a guy or two that leaves that you, you're you disappointed in, um, perhaps you, uh, you know, you, you pick somebody else up uh, or, or something like that. I think that uh, this is an adjustment for every program in college football. And South Carolina continues to do okay with regards to keeping their guys uh, home. Obviously, you know, with Rattler and Wells, it's not so much about uh, another school or, or NIL in terms of going to an auto checks that money. Uh, it's about going pro or returning to South Carolina. Uh, and I still feel pretty good about that happening. So uh, there we go. Phil, how are you doing? Doing well, sir. Made it through, uh, you know, all the holidays unscathed for the most part. We we battled a little bit of flu last week here at my house, so uh, it's been fun. But other than that, glad to hear you're well and back. And you know, that was a little scary there, touch and go for <laughs> not everybody got the you know the inside track there. But yeah, we're happy to have you, sir. Happy to have you. Definitely, and happy to be back with the award-winning Nana Sports chat box. Yes. Uh, I can actually read it. Uh, you know, last week I thought about doing a pre-bowl show and I was like, man, I couldn't even read my computer screen. I was like, there's no way I can scroll. Phil could probably do it, but I'd, I'd probably miss doing it. And then I'd probably have to bail out, you know, because the thing started spinning. Uh, by the way, we will have Jamie Bradford. Thanks to him for filling in on signing day with you guys. Also, Keith Alsep and everybody else that kind of chipped in. Hale McGranahan came on, heard you guys had a great show. Yeah, for um, sure. Thanks to everybody but, for hopping on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Nana's Sports Chat Box, Brian says, let's go, fellas. Missed y'all. Hope you had a good vacation, Christmas, birthday, New Year. Thank you, Brian. And now that he signed, what are y'all's thoughts on Lenore Sellers? How early could he have an impact? I don't know. Quarterback's weird. I'll, I'll tell you this. 
I, I think he's got a bright future, and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him be the starter here. I, I buy, you know, some, some fans have had the opinion maybe because he's was a late rising four star prospect that oh well he, he's probably not that good or whatever. I I think I think he's really good. I think yeah. that South Carolina got a steal there. Uh, you know, credit Dowell Loggins mm-hmm. uh, for closing the deal on him, getting him flipped for Syracuse. Um, I think as time moved on with this recruiting cycle, he became more and more important. Uh, Jared says there's thunderstorms in West Columbia in January. Um, yeah, we there was a tornado here in Greenville. Yeah, it's like all yeah. There, there's a tornado warning in Illinois yesterday. So jeez, oh, <laughs> sort of some weird thing. Craig says we're back like cook crack. <laughs> Uh, everybody says, welcome back. Krieger says, fans showed out at the bowl game. Looked awesome on TV. Yeah, it did, right? It really did. It um, was awesome I, to see. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell you my experience with the bowl. Um, I did, you know, because of the vertigo and stuff, for whatever reason, uh, and I couldn't do the show this way, obviously. It's not a sustainable a cure. <laughs> for some reason, I had a few beers about my, my vision got better. So we went to our watering hole. And this is kind of funny because there's a Notre Dame fan up there. A lot of Notre Dame fans at the watering hole, right? I, I was kind of in the minority. Uh, the people that hate Notre Dame to go to the bar, uh, they were all for the Gamecocks winning. Uh, I even got to play the fight song on the jukebox. And uh, so they were there. But it's really like me, uh, people that love Notre Dame and people that hate Notre Dame. And then most of those people are miserable because they're all Bears fans too. So, I you know, a big crowd started shuffling in. I think that's from Piano Man. A regular crowd shuffles in. Uh, and, and, um, and there's a guy, okay, so there's a guy named Jerry, right? Jerry's like came over on the boat from Ireland. Older guy. <laughs> Massive respect for this guy. Look, man, I've seen The Departed. I've seen Gangs of New York. I know what this guy's all about. And, uh, and, and so a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the game and he's like, I don't give a fook about the bowl game. <laughs> I guess I could say fook, right? I don't no, give a fook a about the bowl game. Uh, fook isn't a cuss word, not, not mm-hmm. in American English. And, uh, and so I didn't expect to see Jerry up there. Sure enough, 10 minutes before kickoff, he comes walking in with this big eaten grin on his face, mm. <sighs> doing this, <sighs> you know. And he goes and sits at the end of the bar, and it's 24-10, and Carolina's going up and down the field. Notre Dame's not playing well. And I looked at him, and because I, I don't want him to kill me or, or call a hit out on me and my fiance, because I'm scared of him. Uh, and I look at him, and I was like, Jerry, man, I hope you're doing well. You know, sorry about this right now. And he looks at me, and he's like, ah, this game, this game is not over. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that Carolina was going down. Right, because that, that, that was that was some scary leprechaun luck of the Irish kiss the blind stone kind of crap, and 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 a couple of weeks ago he didn't care about the bowl, but all of a sudden he did, right? <laughs> um, Notre Dame's driving at the end before they threw the hundred yard pick six. I think I threw my napkin across the bar and got up and left. <laughs> Because I was just so frustrated. Uh, and I walk outside. The fiance comes around the corner. He's like, uh, JC, you better come back in here because South Carolina just picked the pass off and took it 100 yards for a touchdown. And I came back in. I was like, ah, sorry for showing my butt there. Okay. Um, and then, of course, they went down. And, and it, it, that game sort of reminded me a little bit, Phil, of the 2005 Independence Bowl, uh, which I was at, actually, in Shreveport. Uh, won five hundred dollars at the blackjack table later that night, but I was just dejected in that one because Carolina got up in that one just like they did against the Irish, big, and you feel pretty good about their chances of winning. There was even a hundred yard pick six in that game. It was Missouri intercepting Blake Mitchell, but you know, I, I just the, the the dejection from losing that. And I I got on the big spur dot com, and really people weren't all that upset, and I was like. Well, I am, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've had a pretty rough go of it, right? You know, I, I didn't even get to go to the game. Um, and by the way, man, you guys should really, really pat yourselves on the back. Not only uh, was that, that, that was probably the biggest crowd Carolina's has taken to a bowl in a while. I, I would say probably like the Outback Bowls in the early 2000s, but I, I may have messed that up because the, the Citrus Bowls Carolina went to had pretty good attendance. And I think the Peach Bowl in 2010 with Florida State 
it was right over in Atlanta. I think I think maybe numbers wise, the Gamecocks may have had as many there, but boy, it was a heck of a crowd. Uh, really, and everybody I talked to said the Gamecocks flat out took over Jacksonville. Uh, everybody seemed to have a good time. So uh, you know, hats off to you guys. And I want to take this a step further and just uh, tell the fan base out there, you guys, you know, Carolina football in many ways came back this year. You know, mm-hmm. it had been a long time since they beat Clemson, a long time since they had a win over Tennessee, a long time since they won at Kentucky. They've never beaten Texas A&M. Uh, but it's also been a long time since Carolina sold out games. And, look, I know there were probably some empty seats in the upper corners, but when you sell all the tickets for a game like Charlotte – you know, that's, that's the fan base that has made this fan, the, 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 the reputation of Carolina famous, you know, in many ways, that's the best thing about the program historically is the fan support. Uh, and you guys really showed out uh, the whole season and then gobbled up the bowl tickets. I mean, uh, I actually thought it was a positive thing. People were frustrated because they couldn't, uh, couldn't get bowl tickets, right? Yeah. Oh, that that, 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 that <laughs> game club, you know, the, uh, know. anyway, <laughs> 76 in the next four chat. I was going to strike all the scoop. Got to be a big episode, right? Right. Uh, Don from the Pacific Northwest is welcome back lads. Jared says, please tell the staff changes will be made. I think they'll leave me one with the offensive line. Uh, a lot of rumors out there about all that. Lance says, yo, what up, Killers? I'm still kind of hurting. Lance, I thought about you mm-hmm. after that game. I was like, I bet you had a lot of lattes, and it doesn't feel too good after you win. Marion says, welcome back. Chuck says, thank the Lord. Welcome back. <laughs> James says, my clock says 11.01. Bruin Nation, Gamecock <laughs> Barbecue. JC, hope you're feeling better. I am feeling better. Lance says, love, love, love the intro music. Damn, I don't need one, but might have to grab me a cold dowel Loggins. Yeah, I know. And we're it is good. We're going to change that, too, which stings. Well, well <laughs> for the next next few weeks, we're going to we're gonna be sick because YouTube flagged it, right? Mm-hmm. And so we monetize this show. We don't make we don't get rich off of it, but the YouTube has it go on the show. They, they won't pay you if you're using somebody else's stuff. But I got that tune from a website that's duty-free music, like free music you can use. So – I kind of sent that to them, but it takes 30 days because they have to run it past the the, the songwriter. And if the songwriter doesn't say anything, we go back to it. Hmm. But, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, just in case the bagpipe playing dude that orchestrated that back in the day uh, <laughs> wants to make an issue out of it, I don't want to lose I'll lose that money. You know, I, I don't want to be, I don't lose money on this deal, you know. So that's the deal there. Connor said he's lucky enough to free score free skybox seats. Wow. My takeaway right. was it sounded a lot more fun out in the normal seats. It was loud. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Fowler says our men's basketball team's hard to watch. KFC had COVID. Kept it from the bowl game. Sorry about yeah. that. Hope there's no lingering um, after effects there, KFC. Hope you will. Uh, Austin says, once again, we have nothing to talk about. <laughs> every time we show up. Every time we show up. Yeah, Nana Sports says, Happy New Year's, clowns. I love that. It's like, welcome Happy back, clowns. Uh, Jeff Fowler says, Bernie's was amazing, y'all. Thanks for the recommendation. Family had a blast in South Carolina. Uh, and what do we tell Jeff Fowler? He's a United That's States right. Marine Corps. Thank Semper you for five. Your Thank you. First one Amen. of the year. Uh, Craig or can we show hard to see the door and bring in Jimmy Smith and rocket Sanders? That's a rumor that's going around. And I'm not going to say that it hadn't come from some credible people, but it hadn't come from like the right people for me to really jump on board with that. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm skeptical, you know, like with, with hardest maybe he does find another gig or something because coaches do that. Um, he's a wide receivers coach before he came to Carolina. So maybe he wants to get back to coaching his position or what, um, and Jimmy Smith, I think, would be a logical candidate for the job. Man, Rocket Sanders is going to have to fly over programs with a lot more NL money to come to South Carolina. Yeah, that'd be, uh, no, I he's just be and he's very, uh... he's so he's so good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it would not have like to be one you're of finding things. a diamond in the rough there. You know, you already got a known quantity, so you know you're going to have to pay the, the, the full full fare. To get rockets. Oh, fair. <laughs> Macadino podcast back in the house. Brandon or Ganey, if the guy who was sitting behind me at the bowl game who threw up in my seat while I was standing is on here, I hope you stub all of your toes today. <laughs> 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 I, was me- 
Me too, my man. Oh, Jimmy That's Sith nice. bringing that power of the dark side. Yes. Taylor said, um, uh, here, here, here's a question from Taylor. He says, JC Phil, have you heard any updates on what way Spencer may be leaning or juice? It's kind of a mystery, although I think we're all, you know, feeling reasonably okay that they're coming back, right, JC? I kind of feel like that. I, I think there's some things in the works, nio wise, for yeah, uh, both of those guys. Pull, pull some dollars together for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. both of those guys. Um, but uh, and with Juice, it, it's one of those things where he. Juice isn't that Spencer came to the table with a lot of NIL. You know, it's, it's, it, like I've said many times, it's Spencer Rattler Inc. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the deal with him is he can probably make more in NIL money coming back than being a fourth to seventh rounder, which is where he's projected right now. Juice is not projected that high, but I don't know, man. I, I, the NFL, somebody on the, on the message board the other day said paralysis by analysis. I think they overthink it. Uh, and if somebody that's smart would take him, you know, he'd be fine. But that said, you know, I, I think what Juice is tired of looking at is he looks around the country at freshman receivers going to other schools that haven't done anything Yeah, that are guaranteed whatever. But those are rumors, too, because I've heard some of these guys, they get promised stuff, and it's like this big dollar amount. And then they dribble it out to them, and half the time they don't get it and all that good stuff. I can assure you guys. I would be embarrassed. I would. I would probably just go do something else if I had you know, Carolina Rise, my collective, and I promised a kid something, and I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I would take it out of my pocket, you know, and do it, just because that's. Uh, I just don't believe in that because I, I think I think this business has gotten dirtier with it, and uh, I, I think not at South Carolina. Because I talked to just about everybody involved, everybody involved within I South Carolina, all upstanding people, including myself. But uh, other places, I think some some are lying to kids. I mean, I think just lying. Yeah, I anyway. you have reports of that, you know, out there. But you know, when it's homegrown, kind of like the collective situation here in South Carolina, it's like you know, you know, folks like yourself have a lot more to lose than just uh, <laughs> the collective itself. Yeah. So, you know, it's no not like you're going to lead somebody astray here. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, yeah, there's no way I would do it. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> first, first break. I have to hit the bathroom, uh, and we're going to continue with the Nana Sports chat box right here. Jamie Bradford coming up second hour. Not going to. I haven't. We haven't checked the mailbag in so long, man. I think I'm just going to go through and. Oop, I just made a noise. By the way, I have a new mic to try to eliminate some of that. Uh, that that noise we've been getting right the boom uh, and i took away the arm like phil's got because i i'm too fidgety i guess uh, i went back to my the old school snowball mic like i had uh, when we first did uh locked on the gamecocks podcast which with keith the old school snowball i got a black one instead of a white one this time because the white one got dirty and i was like am i that dirty of a person um, it doesn't clean well phil uh but uh Anyway, so I'm going to take the one break. I'll be right back, and uh, and we'll talk more right here. Inside the Game Cuts, the show is back, and we'll be back after these messages. Golfers and wannabe golfers, former Gamecock golfer Meredith Taylor is now a full-time golf instructor in the Midlands of South Carolina. In-person golf lessons are held at the Country Club of Lexington. Half hour, hour, on course nine or 18 holes. And if you're outside of South Carolina, Meredith conducts virtual lessons. Just send in your golf swing for analysis. Gift cards are available for in-person one-hour lessons. Connect on Twitter at Mayor Taylor and find her online at McKellarEnterprises.org. Her email is on the website. Schedule your next lesson today with Meredith Taylor, former Gamecock golfer. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, Get in the stands with fan plans. Uh, this is Coach O. Now back to the show. Go Tigers in the soul. Uh -oh. 
Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. We're happy to be back with you after here the new year. The show is brought to you by Express Sunrooms, as always. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to set up a no-obligation consultation about a potential backyard retreat for your home. And as well as Cindy Searfoss is back with us again to sponsor the first hour. Give Cindy a call for your upstate residential real estate needs, 864-414-5271. And a few things to clean up. Uh, JC, we can still use fan plans, y'all, uh, for all mm -hmm. your travel needs. It does not just have to be for the bowl destination. So if you do have regular travel, uh, you know, for business or anything like that to get to use all of your loyalty and rewards points. We would appreciate it if you continue to use fan plans for that travel. Absolutely. And of course the award-winning Nana sports chat box. It's my love. You got missed y'all. We really did. It's been, really? I, I think about y'all all the time, actually. <laughs> I I do, I'm like, doing. You know, some of them I get to keep up with you on Twitter and then, you know, yeah. I don't. So it's like, oh, I hope they're doing well. <laughs> I'll have like a dream about like, you know, I'm living my life or like shopping for something. And I'll be like, what does, what does what is Craiger say? What is You're right. <laughs> uh, D. Ganey said they had no answer for the beast Atkins. I thought that really hurt Carolina. And, and it did. When you talk it to was. feedback, even Rattler said something about it. Like they had to go to more 10 personnel in the second half. And I think you get real one dimensional uh, when that happens. And they kind of, I don't, I don't think they felt like they could run the ball and all that good stuff. Uh, Michael says, what was your overall take for the season after the game last Friday? I was proud of the team. Wasn't very upset. I think it was a hell of a season, man. I mean, yeah, any way you slice it, it really is to finish that way. Uh, you know, when you look back to where they were in 2020, I mean, a two win team, albeit a full SEC slate. I mean, you, you come a long way, baby. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, it, it, two wins. And I always think this. I think big wins kind of cancel out if he losses. And I think if you have to pick uh, between going eight and five and losing to every team that, that you should have and beating every team you should have, um, mostly it, it's almost better when you're kind of in the building process to win the games some you shouldn't. And then you know, if you drop a Missouri game or Florida game or whatever, certainly that's not good. But, you know, it kind of cancels it out because when you're recruiting and things like that, you could you build momentum more so with the big wins, the unexpected, you know, so to speak, beating teams that are, you know, in the Orange Bowl, two of them, <laughs> or, or, or snapping that streak against Kentucky when Kentucky was in the top 15 or beating A&M and all their five-star players. Uh, so I thought it was a very good year. I don't think anybody should be satisfied with eight and five, but I think that, the future's bright. I, I don't know what's going to happen next year until, you know, we kind of figure out who all's coming back and, and stuff like that. But I think uh, recruiting wise, and I haven't spoken on this uh, on the show yet. I thought it was a, it was a tremendous signing day. I mean, they didn't really lose anybody and they got big tree back in the fold earlier and uh, flip sellers at the end. I mean, I thought that was a, I mean, I can't remember a signing day where there isn't at least one that you kind of go, ah, gosh, wish they could have gotten him. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there was a so lot. That was my Brandon, biggest takeaway from that was, you know, the most positive thing was there were no surprises. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no bad you surprises. Just, you want to you make it through that day with no surprises. <laughs> yeah. Crager says, we should have known when someone with the the name O'Donnell and Fortune made it. O'Donnell Fortune. Oh, Fortune. This game is not over. Because even if a Donald Fortune did it, it's not over, Fortune. It isn't over. Uh, wrong name for another Dame game for win for us. Ganey says Nate Atkins can't be stopped. Uh, Ed was there. It says 70% 70, 70 Carolina fans. Great seats. Club level 208. Um, Brandon says there were a lot of game packs at the Chick-fil-A Bowl in 2010. I, I'm pretty, yeah, that, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Brandon Coon says, who will Devin Hyatt sign with? Not South Carolina. Yeah. I don't know where he's going to sign, um, but we'll see. Sammy says it's going to need to hear our first coach old 2023. There he is. There he is. Craiger says Spencer's going to make more than Shane Beamer. <laughs> Maybe for a short <laughs> time until they get the Beamer contract ready to roll. Uh, Jared says, can we get juice into the collective funds? That's in the process of happening. Uh, Macadino Pod. 
was very impressed with my Gamecocks. We played so many new faces and still look more prepared than we looked against Georgia State. That's true. Uh, I can see Spencer being the best SEC quarterback next season. I can't rule that out either. Need to be the odds on preseason favorite to be number one for sure. Chuck says Ward is Lloyd is practically begging to come back. That's what he's going to have to do because they're not, they're not going to beg him to come back and right, wrong or indifferent. I think and I, with the way he left, I think that's the right move. Uh, and if he comes back, all's forgiven. He certainly is a talented running back, but you know, uh, McAdino, Tonka Birch and Huntley were very impressive. If we get another edge player of a good pass rushing line, linebacker needs to fill gaps better and get some speed. Yeah. Linebacker was disappointing uh, in that football game. Yeah, you can see that's um, where it just kind of fell apart. That and, you know, youth, I think, and just not, not – these guys, you know, haven't played full games, so they weren't conditioned well, and everybody just got gassed. Hmm. Yeah, they did. And depth was an issue at the end. I've watched a lot of Notre Dame this year, man. One thing I'll say about that team, and they've had some very embarrassing losses by their standards. I mean, you lose at home to Stanford. I mean, this isn't Jim Harbaugh's Stanford or – the Stanford that uh, the early David Shaw Stanford where they're in the top 10 or whatever. That's a, that was not a good Stanford team at all. They only scored 14 in South Bend. I lost them to Marshall. Again, not a great team uh, in the Sun Belt. Good, not great. But they, they got up off the mat. I mean, I, and I watched them in a lot of games. They never quit. Uh, even when things maybe didn't go their way. I mean, the Navy game, they were a big Navy came back, almost beat them. They held on. Uh, they played their asses off against Southern Cal when Southern Cal was hot. Mm-hmm. Southern Cal, obviously, uh, by the way, congratulations to the Tulane green wave. <laughs> <laughs> beating, beating, beating the mighty Trojans in the cotton bowl. Um, so that's, that's the deal there. So, yeah, I, 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 I think sometimes you do have to credit the other team. And I credit Notre Dame for facing adversity and uh, coming back and doing what it takes to win. And, and their quarterback as well, who hadn't played in a long time. Um, John says, are you surprised at all that Marshawn hadn't found a new home yet? In some ways. In some ways. Uh, Craig says, got my – yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it is a little weird. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, uh, I figured he on. would sign quickly, but, yeah, I don't know. There's something going on. 76 was thankful for a terrific signing day. Daddy O says closer to 80% Carolina. Craiger got his Christmas card and magnet from Carolina Rise. Daddy O says Birch to Oregon. That's kind of the rumor, but hold hold the phone on Birch getting out of here right now. Just trust me on that one. Not, not saying that it won't, but I, I based on the information I got this morning, which is different than the information I got last night, uh, <laughs> Let's just call it a fluid situation. How about that? <laughs> uh, Frank goes 500 yard injury prone running back whose best games were against bad teams. No thanks. I don't know about that. Well, I mean, they had. Well, I mean, you're talking about like his numbers. I mean, they he did run all over SC State and Coastal. He had a good game against A and M. I don't know. Well, A and M's bad. I know their rushing defense wasn't all that good. Um, it was good when he smart- needed him to be in Kentucky. Yeah, at Kentucky, he did some good things. So I, I think Marshawn Lloyd served his purpose this year, and I think yeah, you know, they certainly could have used him. And I also remind everybody against Clemson before the the pass to Wells, Marshawn got what three, four yards on four, 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 five yards first two mm-hmm. carries to set that up. It was a, you know, as we know, that was a close one. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Um, Kevin says, how much would your expectations change without Rattler and Wells compared to with them? One or two wins, probably. Um, I, I think that if you look at those two coming back, South Carolina could be ranked in the top 15 uh, to 20 to start the season. Um, I think it also sets up, a, a you know, networks love quarterback, um, quarterback battles, right? Like yeah. big time quarterback battles. And you have Drake May at North Carolina. And if you have Rattler coming back to South Carolina, that's going to be a very attractive game for that network. And hopefully for some of you, 
a lot of you that don't like going to Charlotte. You don't keep us <laughs> going to Charlotte. <laughs> you, you guys will show up for that one because that'll be that 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 because that, 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 North, North Carolina probably I think they return they return May at least. I mean, and, and at some point their good defensive players will be good. You just kind of hope it's not the beginning of next year. But uh, you know that could be a prime time game, four o'clock game, something like that. So, uh, Sonder says clowns. Welcome back, clowns. Thanks, man. Uh, Daddy O says, are some of these kids getting as much NIL money today because they know playing on Sunday won't happen? I don't know of many guys that. You got to think there's some, you know, hometown hero kind of kids, you know, in certain places that are, you know, scooping up as much as they can because they know they're not, you know qualified i guess you know or for lack of a better term to play on sundays so you know yeah. there's stories out there like that i'm sure i mean i think i think the carry and joiner made a good move coming back yeah because he, he's making an all money and he's happy and not sure where his upside is uh in the nfl i think i think i think we're finding out to carry and joiner is a quarterback <laughs> Um, I've said that a bunch. Uh, he did have a nice catch at receiver, kind of still getting a little better at that. But, uh, boy, he gets in there. He just does a lot of natural stuff. It, it doesn't always look pretty. It's not always a tight spiral. But, man, he 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 just looks so much more natural back there, QB. Uh, so, yeah, people ask me if Rattler and Wells don't come back. Well, I think you're looking at Luke Doty. Uh Probably being the quarterback. I think the carry and joiner could battle him for the quarterback job. Tanner Bailey could get in that mix. But uh I think, you know, the, the second half the other day, notwithstanding, and, and it is really hard when you're one dimensional and the other team knows you're not running the ball. Um, you know, so that's the deal there. Um, that's the deal there. Uh with the second half the other day. But I think with the way Rattler ended the season and how comfortable he was, um, especially with Juice coming back. And, you know, they seem to all like the, the Dowell Loggins plan mm-hmm. on offense. Uh, I think it'd be huge, you know, and, and I think I think he could play his way into a high draft pick, higher mm-hmm. draft pick. Uh, also says, even if Lloyd came back, I do not think the fans would think all is forgiven. He went from a fan favorite to quitting on his team for money. DK deserves all the NIL money Lloyd was getting. Hmm. Not sure it works that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll say this about Marshawn. The fans took care of him. I, mean, I, I, I ran across my Uno butterfly sweatshirt. Just now had it over here next to the turtle pond. And uh, the the old lady washed it for me. So <laughs> the old lady. The old lady. <laughs> anyway. So, uh I don't know. Will said, uh, JC, you didn't dispute the poster that said Lloyd had interest in coming back. Is that because you've heard something or am I grasping the straws? That's another one of those rumor things. Um, you know, what Tony reported while I was sick was the door is open. Uh, it's cracked, but they don't think he's coming back. So we'll see. Brandon says, is Bill Smith out of eligibility? Unfortunately, yes. And I feel yeah. bad for him. Uh, he just was not healthy all year. It was a foot injury. And, guys, that's tough. I mean, he's not going to look that good. And then he never, you know, got – and he still, I think, scored five touchdowns this year, Bill Smith did. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Uh, KFC says, why would Birch want to transfer? Why does anybody transfer these days? Uh, Ganey says, was there something going on behind the scenes with the joiner this year? There's no excuse for him to get basically zero touches till the end of the season. Uh, offensive coordinator's decision. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's got Satterfield Road all over it. <laughs> yeah, well, and here, here's the thing, too. Like like I always talked about that, you know, that package. Th- th- he's a package. He's not a play. And so, yeah, like against Georgia, you don't go in there and run him up the middle and then, you know, just ignore the kid for the rest of the year. I mean, it's your fault, really. Of course, that guy's Nebraska's issue now. So, um. 76 says, proud of the young man Joiner is. Lesser young men would have given up or quit. He knows he's a quarterback. We know he's a quarterback, but circumstances have been challenging. Brandon says, who will be the starting linebackers next year? Maybe Kaba and Blanton. Blanton's got to get faster. 
you know, if, if you if had to bet money on it right now, man, I wouldn't rule out like Kaba and Pup Howard. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got the athleticism to be able to start. Uh, you just hope he gets around the learning curve you know, yeah. for the college game quickly. Uh, you know, but no, I was going to say it wouldn't surprise me if it were Kaba and a transfer. Depending on who they get, absolutely. Yeah. And but I'll say this too, Pup uh, in the practices, I was told he's better than anybody else I got. Which, I mean, <laughs> after seeing good. his high school tape, does not surprise anybody, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. No doubt, no doubt. That dude's all over the place. Uh, Quantrell says, any chance Carolina goes after Trayshawn Ward from FSU, six yards of carry. Great compliment to Mario Anderson. Shifty pass catching back. I don't know. Um, also saw that maybe he he isn't leaving. So mm. that's the deal there. Magadino says, y'all see Travis Hunter tweeting that FSU called him before he was in the portal. That answers our questions about why Bell tried to sell his shirt. So the next day he was in the portal. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I That Travis Hunter and FSU situation, there, there's some, that's a complex situation. Right. <laughs> so I wouldn't think that Bell and Bell, when he left, wasn't necessarily going to FSU. He's going to Florida. So I don't know about that, but that, that's plausible. I mean, I'm not saying that didn't happen. Uh, Craig says Kaba and Pup for me. Uh, Ed says Jordan won't have an issue finding employment in South Carolina. No. <laughs> uh, any word yet on Juice and Rattler? Not yet. They're working on that. Um, anyone else see Blanton playing DT on one of Notre Dame's fourth down sneaks? They got three yards. No, why would he even play in DT though? That's no weird. Idea. Yeah, that is kind of odd. I don't know, maybe somebody was hurt. I don't know because you still got Sanders, yeah, and, you see, yeah, there's got depth Nick, on the line. Yeah, that doesn't Nick, make any sense. <laughs> yeah, Nick Barrett picked off a pass, man. I was like, holy crap, it's Nick Barrett. You got enough guys to put three of them in on an offensive play. <laughs> yeah. 76 said, said this on TBS, but Juju's the only uninjured running back with SEC experience on our roster now. That's a problem. Got to hit the portal hard, regardless of Lavoisier's status, and he's hurt. Well, I think, I think the kid from Newberry has a chance to be good. Uh, yeah. I would prefer that they get either Lloyd back or get somebody else. Austin says – Blanton was in a four-point stance. That may be like a – well, shoot. And I was Blanton playing the mic or the will? Because the will is like the Brad Johnson position, and they do have certain packages. They do that. I thought Blanton was a mic. I don't know. Um, FSU Carolina is a brewing rivalry on social media. That's why I stay off. Social media. <laughs> Saunders says Blanton gets a lot of praise, but every time I see him, he looks like he's waist deep in plow mud. I just hope he can get faster. Well, here's the question, Sonder. And, and I say this a lot about young linebackers. Some of them look slow. And then all of a sudden, the next year, they look fast. So, because um, they figure out what they're doing. You know? uh, Stone Blanton could either be. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there is a question about his top end speed. I'll put it that way. Uh, and I love Stone Blanton. Loved him as a prospect. Uh, think as an in the box Mike linebacker, he's going to be fine. But I do think he does need to work on his speed a little bit. And I don't know whether that's you, you drop some weight or you're just more confident. Uh, I, I don't know. But he's a good. Uh, he's, I still think he's a good player with a bright future. Uh, it's just. On that, uh, when Logan Diggs took off on that, I guess it was a swing pass, and they went 89 yeah. yards or whatever, you, you saw Stone full sprint, and he wasn't catching him. <laughs> but Logan Diggs is a really good player now. So uh, Charles says, seems like the old crabby back in my day guys who were complaining about what a cluster NIL would be were 100% right, starting to turn me into an old guy myself. I think it's just something you have to navigate, and I think – uh, Charles, over time, you know, you have to kind of look back and say, well, how did this – did this really hurt the program? Did it hurt the sport? Did it hurt this, that, and the other? Um, and I, well, we'll get our answer. You know, I, I may I may eventually agree with that. I may not eventually agree with that. I think, 
you need more data and you need to see how it, how it impacts and, and all that. Um, so, you know, oh, Saunders says, I'm from the coast. It's Pluff Mud. Pluff Mud, oh, yeah. <laughs> Pluff Mud. My bad, my bad. Uh, Brandon says, how many more high school kids will we sign next month? Just Hardy and maybe Harbor. I think that's the plan right now. You never know who's going to pick up. Um, you know, uh, Quantrell says, if you guys touched on the LSU scandal rumors at all, people are, aren't at and surprised to find that odd. Or maybe I'm not in the know what really happens on recruiting trips. Yeah, this was actually at the SEC championship game, apparently. This is on Reddit. There's this big wild party <laughs> involving a lot of people. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> a lot of people. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. But everybody everybody uh, here in the Nana Sports chat box says Stone may get faster when he can react and all that. Yeah, Charles I like says that. That's a, yeah, because Austin said that. I think that's part of it, too, is like, yeah, you're, you're, he's still thinking too much as a freshman, which, you, you know, game experience slows that down for you. Uh, Charles says, it's. I think it's currently hurting the sport. I'm optimistic it can get fixed. See, that's that's the problem is I don't know what the solution is because the NCAA is not going to do anything. They'll get sued. Uh, the United States Congress is not going to do anything because they'll, they're just not. They, they, they have completely opposite worldviews of everything. Uh, you know, and they're going to, one side's going to argue for complete unionization and 50% of the revenue and, and that'll destroy the sport. You know, that'll just, uh, the, you're basically watching pro ball there. Um, and, uh, and the other side just kind of just doesn't want pay for play, but anything else will be fine. I think they more wanted like a true NIL situation, uh, where it's got to be legit and you got to earn it which is fine, but then I think you're getting into the point then where you're limiting their opportunities and the sport in and of itself is like crazy, crazy rich. Hmm. Um, I think that the answer, quite frankly, folks, is you ban uh, NIL, you can basically ban it for your first two years because you signed them all to a uh, television, a piece of the television money. Everybody yeah, that's gets, what I think. Yeah, you can leverage the the TV money into that because because yeah. that is a that is an nil deal, and uh, you're not going to get sued for an exclusive nil deal because you know just like when you do a commercial for Volkswagen, they don't want you to do Hyundai for six months or whatever. There's a time <laughs> period where you know if they're paying you that much, they have exclusivity. Um, all these people, you know, Taylor Swift does commercials for Capital One. And my God, how much did they probably have to pay her? And all those other Taylor Swifts that they superimposed. Have you noticed that in the commercial? There's like 16 Taylor Swifts. I'm like, They're my God. Like Swift. Yeah, I know. <laughs> One for all of your ex-boyfriends, right? One for all of your songs. <laughs> One for all of your dramatic breakups. And Anyway. <laughs> but so, so Taylor Swift, she's not going to be able to go do a commercial for Discover Card. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's how you limit it. And you say, all right, everybody gets the same. Now, the people in the ACC are going to bitch and moan because they don't have that much money. The people in the SEC and Big Ten are going to be far better off, right? Because they have more TV money. But that's the only way I can even get it fair, like within the conferences, you know? And then after two years, get what you're worth, but you police it. And you, you, you know, like right now, guys. Uh, for, according to the laws of the state of South Carolina and the rules, you can pay someone for NIL, whatever the heck you want. Yeah. Open-ended. Like yeah. if I want to pay somebody $50,000 for a tweet. There's nothing stopping you. Nothing <laughs> stopping me. So, uh, so, so maybe they need players get like NIL that. in South Carolina. I was thinking I did. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. I don't know. The high school Some league states. in South Carolina. Yeah. yeah, Texas had to go back and change their rule. And I know Illinois actually just said, oh, yeah, they can do it now. I'm like, God, you, you people really have better things to do in this state, right? <laughs> <laughs> how, how about how about lowering taxes? You know, how about how about uh how about that? So um anyway, all right, we gotta Good take luck. another break. Second break, uh, coming up second hour, Jamie Bradford as the show rolls on and is back. Guess who's back? Back again. We'll be back after these messages. 
Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. You know what, Phil? Let's ask Stone Blanton. Hey, JC and Phil, if you want a solution to your IT problems, give Heritage Digital a call. Our boy Matt Odom has a low cost, one price solution that will get you running right. Call 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com and ask for Matt. He will hook you up today and tell them Stone City. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of REMAX at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at REMAX.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at REMAX.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Gamecocks. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. iHelp Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and iHelp Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. How can I help you? This is Fresh and All-American, Nicky Memorial of the Carolina Gamecocks, and you are listening to the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. The show is brought to you by Express Sunrooms of Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to set up a no-obligation consultation about your outdoor retreat, potentially, uh, as well as get $500 off your project if you decide to go forward with him. Just by mentioning that you heard it here on the show, John will join us uh, more than likely on Friday. He's got a lot of ideas heading into the new year. Happy to have him aboard. And of course, the first hour of the show is brought to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Coldwell Banker Kane Realty team here in the upstate. Give Cindy a call, 864-414-5271. And uh, let her sell or find you a new home here in the upstate. We got distracted. That's outstanding. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, got, man. I, got, I got I got the dist- full form. I got, I got distracted <laughs> a little bit there too. So. Uh, anyway, good to good to know um, some things don't change, right? <laughs> no doubt, man. No right. doubt. Uh, back to the Dennis Force chat box. Austin says bumper pool. That's the Arkansas linebacker is slow too, but he diagnoses plays and reacts super fast. Yeah. Look, Jasper Brinkley, four, eight. Uh, I remember Brandon spikes, uh, out of high school. I was at rivals at the time and we got a big, big, good look at Brandon spikes. <laughs> the kid was from Shelby, North Carolina. Really good. One of urban's recruits down at Florida, uh, four, nine, one, five, one, uh, ran the same thing at the combine, but was just so instinctive. Uh, and, and if you're an in the box linebacker, you don't have to be straight line, super fast. Uh, what you got to do is take great angles and you got to do, um, you know, diagnose, like you said, and, and be qu- more quick than fast and really good laterally, really good laterally. Uh, Chuck's talking about NIL here. He says it's a business ought to have some contracts in place to ensure if a player's paid to play, which is what it is. They have to play for the school for a specific time period. Yeah, unfortunately, you, that's a no-no. Yeah, you can't because you know? that's enticement, I guess, by the rule, right? Enticement, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the the NCAA would actually be within its rights to do something. Then. But I think the NCAA is signaling where their intention is on going with this moving forward with their new choice of president, you know, being a sitting governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, up until last week, I think it was sitting governor of Massachusetts. Um, but yeah, it's Charlie Baker and it politically. Yeah, it's all it's about to all go into the hands of the uh, political elite. So uh, take that for which, what it's which makes me want to throw up. But at the and, same time, you know, there, there's certain politics. I mean, Charlie Baker's actually he's a good moderate governor. 
Uh, I mean, you, you don't get elected governor of Massachusetts if you're a Republican and, and don't have some sense, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, which means if, if he got elected up there, he appeals to a mass amount of, of, of his constituency. Uh, so maybe he's got some common sense, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those northeastern governors do. He does a Sununu from New Hampshire. I think he's got a lot of common sense. So uh, the guy from New Jersey and Pennsylvania, those two, no. <laughs> Would not put them in the same league. <laughs> Would not put them in the same category. Uh, Ed says, Phil, you need the classic print of the dogs playing poker on the wall behind you. I saw that, Ed. Yeah, that would be a pretty good one. I'm, I'm going to make some changes here. I got a, uh, I got a picture of me and Def Leppard. I met them one time at, a, at the Marriott in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm going to get framed and put it up, a couple other ones. And I got a new poster. Uh, I got the Inside the Gamecocks of Show poster, like JC's got over his shoulder. And, of course, the one mm-hmm. that I got the, so kindly from yeah. Sawyer Nicks. Uh, so I can see, see my, gift, my gift from Sawyer as I tilt it up here. As Mayor you can Mitch see, there is Mayor McCheese. In all of its splendid, splendid glory. Uh, by the way, the, the old Miss hat, Ed Orgeron gave that to me. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Old Miss. It was 06. We visited with him down here. Like, welcome to Old Miss. And he sent me a letter and note like, oh, thank you for visiting our program. Recording is our life, bug. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then uh, the Razorbacks towel actually came from uh, my Razorback friend that is cousins with Bill Clinton. And that's why I have a, a signed photo of Bill Clinton up on the other part of my wall. Anyway, mm-hmm. just wanted to say that. Uh, Sky War was super slow. I don't know if he was super slow. He's actually fast. But in a straight line, maybe he didn't run. I don't think. I don't, most linebackers don't run super. I mean, you, you got to have a freak you know, to run really fast at linebacker. Um, Quantrus is all topic, but Skip Bayless needs to be taken off TV. It's disgusting how he handled the DeMar Hamlin situation. He has no regard for human life. <laughs> uh, you know, I, that's what he does. That, that He's made a living off of that. And people continue to pay for it. And, you know, for some reason, they want to hear it because they love argument shows and they just want to watch him and Shannon yell at each other. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't pay that right. dude a nickel. I wouldn't uh, no, pay him I wouldn't a nickel either, to man. I my dog. Hard, you know, it's like that's that. It, I, I can't stand it. I agree that he's you know not worth his weight, but jeez, I think he I mean, does yeah. it now just to poke the bear and get the damn views. It's like and it's like guys like that. I don't retweet or anything like that. I, I wouldn't even screenshot it. But he's such a blowhard. <laughs> It was it's awful. It, it, it was awful. I mean, it was awful what he said. It was an awful situation. And of course, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Demar Hamlin and his yeah. family. It looks, it's, it's looking. I mean, it's, it's not. I'll just say this from what I've read. It's, it's not like the Mike Leach situation. Mike Leach. I mean, mm-hmm. there was not a lot they could do. Right. It was just. There's just not a lot they could do. Hamlin, they got to him quick enough. Uh, I don't know that the guy probably never played football again, but but I think I think there's a chance for recovery. Uh, but absolutely, Skip Bayless. I mean, he's just a. I don't even think he says anything that smart or profound. No, it's it's like, always just the most controversial thing he can come up with, you know. And yeah. then yeah, I mean that's that's his mo. Always has been. He he offers no thoughtful commentary, and you know he's just a. You want to talk about a clown? <laughs> yeah, super duper clown. I, like that's why I love Josh Pate so much, right? Josh Pate has his opinions. Not everybody always agrees with Josh about everything, but they they're thoughtful opinions, and he thinks and analyzes, and then presents it in an entertaining manner. You know, like I'm entertained listening to him just as much as Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless arguing with each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, pardon the interruption was probably one of the better argument shows but you know and it, it, that still got some on my nerves anyway yeah I don't so know. He's he's like, oh, though man he's like one of the originators of you know good sports talk radio you know he's that yeah that's like yeah love to love tony Kornheiser. may not always agree with him but respect the game <laughs> exactly saunders says that mayor mccheese is nightmare full fuel <laughs> He is Meredith, fully resplendent we did. on that poster, too, man. That, that is full McCheese. <laughs> that, that is the full Monty McCheese there. <laughs> uh, 
if you were having nightmares about the the full poster, the full Monty McCheese may stick in your brain there for a little bit. <laughs> Would there be sesame seeds involved with that? I don't know. Sesame anyway, seeds, right there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Meredith uh, saw her hat. <laughs> the McKellar Enterprises hats back there in full force. That's right. Happy New Year, uh, Mayor. Happy New Year to Meredith. Uh, Chuck says we need some Shannon Wadley, DJ Swearinger types at linebacker, guys that love to lay the leather. Pup Howard fits that bill. And, and look, Brown Bland will hit you too. And look, I think Sherrod Green's physical enough. Okay. Brad Johnson, when he gets to you, is I mean, But yeah, you, you know, we all miss Shannon Wadley. <laughs> uh, and whoever else would knock you into next week at linebacker. Uh, and Mo Kaba, I think, is that type of player. Mo Kaba, can, he'll hit you. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing there. Uh, John Thompson says comparing Josh Pate to Skip Bayless is like comparing the Jerry Springer show to 60 Minutes. <laughs> I saw something funny on Instagram. It was like when you heard the 60 Minutes, you know, you st- I still get anxiety about that. Because, like, when I was a kid, and your parents are, you know, football goes off on Sunday or whatever you're watching, you know, on Sunday, you hear that. In my mind, that meant, crap, the weekend's over. Yep. I may have a little homework to do that I hadn't gotten done. I got to get up and go to school tomorrow. This sucks. <laughs> so there's like some Sunday scaries that take place whenever I hear that 60 minutes. Uh, whereas like when Charles Carroll would come on on Sunday morning with Charles Carroll, you remember him? Yeah. You'd always, yeah, I'd always think, well, we got a little NFL football today. Yeah, that's right. God, yeah, we're about to crank up some football. It's going to be a good day. Get outside. Yeah. Yeah. God <laughs> forbid. Uh, so maybe some pro basketball back when I cared during the playoffs, you know, back in the Atlanta Hawks days. But yeah, man, that's scared. But I mean that, that, and that Instagram, like, it was one of those uh, flash 1980s flashback Instagram posts. And I was like, yeah, it does make me, I do get a little anxiety when I hear that. Cause I just feel like I got to go do something. So Saunders says Sunday scares the absolute worst. That's why I take Mondays off. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, that's sometimes, sometimes if I get roped into going to a Chicago bears watch party about, by the way, there's only one left in the year. Yeah, I, I, I'll power through a little bit on Mondays, not really do a whole lot, <laughs> you know. Uh, better show, Jerry Springer or Ricky Lake? I like Springer better just because he was kind of the OG. Same, same. And, and there was Rick, no Ricky, pretense with Jerry. You knew you were going to get a fight on that one. Ricky would try to, you know, spin it to where it was trying to help somebody out or something like that, knowing that it was still just <laughs> in your face TV. <laughs> yeah, John mentions, uh, go do your homework, clown. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, Craiger, I did miss your question about Hardy in the clearinghouse. Well, I mean, he said that. Uh, everything I've heard about him is waiting until waiting waiting until the next signing day with Xavier. Uh, now, Tanner Bailey did something weird last year where he signed kind of like in January. I don't know how they quite did that. Maybe he had already signed. But everything I hear is the next signing day. Um, certainly, I think he's a good player. Uh, Craig says he doesn't seem to fit our culture. Don't. Here's what I would do. I know he got in a fight and got arrested, all right? But it was there were no weapons involved, and, and, and he didn't start it. So, <laughs> you know, I think you need guys like that. Um, I, 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 Craig, I would not make an opinion on if him, him fitting the culture or not, like right now. Because I've seen guys that maybe they kind of a little rough around the edges coming out of high school or junior college or something like that. The next thing you know, they're on the honor roll and graduating or going to grad school. And I mean, they 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 get with the program. You know, never a problem with them. Uh, they don't get in trouble. Now, some guys, uh, you know, you should probably have rethought it <laughs> during the during the recruitment process. <laughs> You know, some guys are like that. So, uh, Georgia, Ohio State, gents. Georgia. Oh, oh Georgia yeah. or TCU? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, TCU? I, we'll uh, talk about know. that. I just got a text because we're doing a JC and Morgan tomorrow. 
uh, from Mike that said 58 four and five star guys on Georgia's roster, 17 on TCU's. <laughs> but I hope I hope TCU wins because I don't have to hear about the blue chip ratio ever again. Because the blue yeah, chip I mean, ratio really dispels uh, that myth. <laughs> and, and look, it, no offense to Bud who came up with it because it's been kind of genius because he's it's lasted all this time. And you can still say 98% of the time. But you can't all you can't continue to say that to win a national championship, you have to have over 50% four or five star guys. Yeah. And so, that and I love the hypno toad. You know. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. Um <laughs> yeah, break, Joseph, yeah, sorry about that. I keep going. Oh, no, you're on, good, on, man. On. I'm still a little rusty myself, looking at the clock, all that good stuff. I do hope that Sonder, you guys that have complained about the mic before. Let me know if the sound is better because I did switch the mic. I switched it out and I want because that thing just kept picking up stuff and I didn't even know where it came like aliens or something. But we'll hit a break. Jamie Bradford's gonna join us right here on the show as the show returns. Go Tigers, go show. We'll be back up with you. Just as your State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home, auto, life, or small business insurance with Tony Pope State Farm Insurance today. And guess what you'll get? That's right, even more good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, Tony Pope State Farm is your go-to agent anywhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try combining your home, life, auto, and or small business insurance today. Tony Pope State Farm has been in business for more than 30 years and can handle anything you need in the tri-state area. Once again, Tony Pope State Farm will help you mix and match perfectly. Call 843-851-2222 or visit TonyPope.com today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, oh, easy. He's got a tire by the tail he has. He better hang on to. People have spoken. Nana's Porch was voted the third best food truck or trailer by the Charlotte newspaper Public Poll. Also, their pimento cheese mm, took third in a contest exclusively for products made in the state of North Carolina. I will let Noah Hall tell you about the rest. Nana's Porch, Southern Cuisine with an Uptown Twist. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina and are in need of residential real estate services, Cindy Bass, Sear Foss of Caldwell, Banker Kane is for you. Ask her about the village at Creekside, all of her listings in my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina, right there on Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a lifelong Gamecock fan. And many of our listeners have already bought homes from her and been 100% satisfied with the detail and care she uses. Cindy Searfoss, 864-414-5271, Caldwell Banker Kane in the upstate for your real estate needs. This is Braylon Wimmer, South Carolina Gamecock Baseball, and you are listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Go Cox! And Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, everybody. The show is brought to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to schedule a no-obligation consultation about a potential backyard retreat for your home. And we are joined now on the McKellar Enterprises guest line by none other than Jamie Bradford. Jamie, good to see you. Thank you so much for stepping in on that last uh, Wednesday that we did the show. Can't Seems like almost a month ago now, but hey, we're glad to be back and glad to have you back today, man. Well, glad to have JC back. Certainly. I know we've talked a ton, JC. I uh, have been checking the mail. No checks have arrived yet from that afternoon, but maybe it's maybe was someone was late putting it in there. Something. Maybe you pawn that off on that. <laughs> somebody, somebody owes me some money. That's all I know. So happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> happy new year, Jamie. For a plug, uh, Jamie wants you to go see his Facebook page, the new Facebook page. <laughs> Yeah, so just yeah, we'll plug that. For yeah, you I, I've been off of Facebook for years. I I I I really don't like it, and I'll you'll, I'll, I'll, never, <laughs> I'll never post anything from my um from my personal page ever. But um, but don't blame the, new, the new page is just for uh for my realtor stuff and for media. So if anybody needs a house or knows someone that does, we're pretty good at it. 
and uh, we can help you out there. But uh, anyways, good to be back with y'all, and JC, good to see you, bud. Yeah, I actually wouldn't like the page today from a couple of my Facebook accounts, so probably getting that to do the same, all that good stuff. And if we if and when, when we move back, obviously now I've got a lot of options. Uh, you know, if it's the upstate, I can use Cindy, and if it's uh, anything below the upstate, I can use my boy JB. Let's so, figure it out. Yep, we got to exactly. figure that out. So. Uh, anyway, so the bowl game, uh, obviously disappointing uh, outcome. Certainly not a disappointing game. It's a hell of a ball game, uh, and yeah. uh, probably one of the best bowl games. If the if the semifinals hadn't been because the semis this year were really good games, uh, if semifinals hadn't been so good. I mean, it could have been one of the best bowl games of the season. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I think depth caught up with Carolina. Uh, some mistakes, losing in-game injuries to Juice Wells and Nate Atkins in particular, I thought were very costly. Um, but all in all, it was a good season. What what say you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it was uh, it was a tough way to end it, no doubt. It was a it was a bowl game. That, that the game had so many magical moments in it for for South Carolina and for Notre Dame, really. You know, and um, you know, but just talking about the Gamecock side of it with. You know, a couple of pick sixes and the the fake punt from the thirty yard line. I mean, I knew we we knew it was a fake. I mean, nobody punts from the thirty. So, uh, but that they scored, it worked. Uh, the Leggett catch and the Rattler throw. I mean, every which way they scored for the most part was was really pretty magical. Outside of that one toss to to Leggett when he took it down the sideline there early in the game, and um, and so you know he kind of started to get this feeling that it was. Oh, gosh, you know, when these things happen, sometimes it's just your day, right? And um, that's kind of what you thought for a little while. But um, as the game went on, you know, the stats really tell the story in this one because not only did Notre Dame outgain them by 200 yards, they could run it. South Carolina could not run the football. Uh, when Atkins went down with that injury, totally changed everything offensively for, for Carolina. Um, the youth and, and the opt outs and the, the draft guys and the transfers, and all that, that, that really caught up to them in a game of this magnitude against a good football team. Notre Dame's pretty good. And, um, you know, playing in the Gator Bowl is, uh, it was, they were excited to be there certainly because of the turnaround that they kind of had during the season. But, you know, this wasn't anything, the lights certainly weren't too bright for them walking into it. Notre Dame's been one of the greatest programs in the history of the sport. Um, so, it was a tough ending, but overall, you know, what a year. Uh, and, and I, you know, personally, I mentioned this yesterday to my, me, and, me and Michael Flint were talking, you know, and it, it kind of felt like for the first time in a while that they, they, Carolina football is back a little bit. Um, you know, we'll see what happens next year, certainly. But just the, the general feel, the, po the positivity for the most part throughout the season, um, you know, winning big games, uh, the support was just outstanding. All year long at williams Price Stadium, it was outstanding when they went on the road, and it was absolutely outstanding in Jacksonville. And, um, you know, so you feel like this thing's headed in the right direction, and now you have to navigate the the strange offseason waters that we have these days. But this this group this group of guys led by Coach Beamer is pretty good at doing that. So no matter what happens, you know, they'll have a good game plan moving forward, and they'll be ready to go in the spring. Big talk around uh, Columbia right now, Spencer Rattler, Juice Wells. Uh, they're kind of the, the two everybody's waiting on, so to speak. Uh, I can only tell people that there's a lot of work being done uh, on the back end by a lot of folks yeah. uh, to try to make that happen. Uh, I still feel pretty good about it. I, I actually kind of um, yeah. I think with you kind of look at where those two are at, they could increase their value so much more by coming back than taking a chance at the NFL. Uh, and not that I necessarily agree with it. I, I think Juice Wells could be a seventh round pick and start for an NFL team next year, but that's me. And uh, Hey, I'm about about 60% with that kind of thing, as does the NFL. But um, yeah. if they come back and then they both could go first round and be all SEC and really be the, the cornerstones to a, a, a really good season next year for the Gamecocks. So what, what are your thoughts on those two possibly yeah. being back? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the last real word I got on this was the day of the bowl game in Jacksonville, and, and that was – you could, at that point in time, expect to see them back. Um, but 
you know, it's been five days. And in college football, things change in five minutes now. So, you know, I, I, I you know, my understanding of all this, JC, has, is, I would say that I'm leaning, uh, not heavily, but, but fairly heavily towards, you're going to see them both back in, in Columbia next year. I mean, that, nothing's really changed there for a while, um, based on the, the intelligence that I've got. But again, with that said, um, as you well know, because you get these calls all day, you know, things change quickly. If they do return, uh, the, the offseason hype train is going to be just tremendous, uh, strictly because of those two guys. And, and you'll all, you know, it'll be, it'll be up to guys like us to almost remind people that there are really good football players on this team, other than Spencer Rattler and, and Juice Wells. I think they're still trying to figure out what they want to do at running back. I, I've got a feeling they're going to end up signing another one, uh, boys and girls. So we'll kind of keep our eyes peeled on that. Um, the offensive line, you know, they, they return a lot of guys there. They're losing guys, there's no doubt. But these last couple of recruiting classes, let's not forget what they've done. They've stockpiled a lot of talent. And and um, and so they're going to have a bunch of dudes coming in and competing in the spring. They're going to have some guys coming in probably expected to start, but there's going to be a lot of competition there, and it's healthy, which is good. Um, outside of juice on the outside, you know, you've, you've got some pretty good players. I mean, Xavier Leggett's good. Uh, they, they're going to really, truly need to figure out how to continue to utilize the carry on joiner more than they have because when he's on the field, things seem to happen. And um, so they got to get him out there and get him in the spots where he needs to be certainly there. The tight end room is better than it was. Uh, th there's not really much of an argument there. When these when guys see these dudes play who are coming in, they're good. And I'll be honest, everybody's talking about the kid from Arkansas. Watch the kid from Western Kentucky. He's as good as any of them. And I don't even know that he's going to be a tight end at South Carolina. I mean, he, he's pretty good. And then you flip it over, and if Birch and Strawn, if Strawn's healthy, which he's on track, and Birch returns, which, you know, my, it, it's probably a little bit better percentage that he does to South Carolina. Uh, you got two of the better ends in the league. You got a, a ton of talent and competition at tackle. Uh, your linebacking core is going to be improved as long as Mo is healthy, which he's on track. And, uh, and then your secondary – is something that most people aren't going to talk about outside of this state, right? When you look around the country, yeah, everybody's going to say Nick Eamon Worry. Everybody's going to say DQ Smith when the conversation is brought up. And hats off to Nick Eamon Worry being a freshman All-American by ESPN this morning. But they, they don't know about these other guys. And, and they're really good. And O'Donnell Fortune, you know, is a guy who – obviously the 100-yard pick was, was unbelievable. But then you got the Nelson kid and the Banks kid. Anthony Rose is a guy who, J.C., you and I talked about this off the air, and I've checked in on it too. Watch out. You know, in the spring, his name's going to be coming up a lot. So outside of South Carolina, a lot of people aren't going to really know about all these other guys except for even Worry and DQ. But when the games start, they will. Uh, it is a really good group of players, and as long as Torian Gray is coaching them, you can expect that they're all going to improve. Absolutely. Um, Torian Gray, wow, wow it's the job he continues to do is really good. Marcellus Dow obviously didn't have a great bowl game after having a really good Clemson game, but uh, he's back as well as a veteran presence. Oh, and wait, I need to throw something in here. JC, I, I've been meaning to do this to you. I, now that you're healthy, I can do it. You remember back in August when you were all concerned about the special teams in South Carolina? <laughs> we're not going to have to do this crap again this coming August, are we? No. And I, do, I do it every year. I do it every year. We get about 10 days from kickoff, and I'm starting oh. to like go through my mind, well, what am I worried about? And then, I'm like, <laughs> and then I start to think, like, I haven't thought about the special teams all season, all off season. I haven't even thought about it. I'm like, oh, my God. What if they're awful, you know, and I guess it's just habit, but that's, uh, I, I'm going to put that to bed, uh, this year. That's a, uh, that's a really good uh, situation there. And I got to give you credit too, man. Cause we were talking when I was sick, uh, we, we had an hour conversation about the bowl game and you're like, I'm going to tell you this right now, O'Donnell fortune, just wait. <laughs> sure enough. Yeah. I didn't get to see it cause I'd stormed out of the bar at that point, but, uh, <laughs> Matt came and got me and brought me back in. Uh, well, he, he was just a guy who, you know, was, uh, you he, know. Was, he was kind of set up to have a chance at having a, a big game because he's, you know, when, when you lose those guys, he was one of the guys that they could move around, right? He could play corner. He could play nickel. You had a quarterback in there who, who was a starter and then didn't play for a while, and he kind of came back in. 
So you just kind of, you know, there was kind of a sneaky feeling there, like this cat's got a chance to make a couple of mistakes in the game, which he did. I think he made three ultimately. And, um, you know, if there's a guy, you know, generally it's the guy who's going to get the most opportunities who's going to have the chance to probably make a play. So that was just kind of kind of the feel. Now, I, it's, I'm not going to lie to everybody on here. I mean, uh, actually, I will. You know, I called it. 100-yard pick six right here. Here it comes, O'Donnell Fortune. And uh, sure enough, after that, I did not win the lottery. But um, it was uh, – that was neat. When he took that back, guys, I, I thought – they're going to they're, they're going to figure this thing out, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, it reinforced for me that you know we're in good hands with the secondary. I think you make a good point, JV, in that you know not a lot of people are going to be talking about these guys heading into next season. But what we've seen, because um, you could tell, I mean, they, I mean they've been thrust into this situation just due to a complete lack of depth back there, which is one yeah. thing we were all kind of concerned about heading into this season. Uh, but that's going to pay dividends next year because now these guys have some experience under their belt. I mean, you've seen Fortune, I think, specifically come in and spell a few guys all year long uh, and then finally get his one big opportunity here towards the end of the year um, and made the most of it. And, you know, Nick, of course, is going to get all the rightly praise uh, that he deserves heading into the season. But, I mean, you know, like you said, Anthony Rose, there's some guys that not everybody knows and nobody's talking about right now that are going to shine next year. And I'll tell you this right now, that this staff loves the group they brought in. Yeah, uh, for 2022. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. Nel- Nelson Banks, Emin Warre, yeah. Smith, all those guys. Yeah. They they feel like all those guys hit. Um, that's why they haven't been crazy. I mean, they, they weren't going to promise the Tony Grimes kid for North Carolina that he could come in and start right. because there's no they don't they can't guarantee that. And I think that's a good thing. And you got some good DBs, uh, I think, coming in uh, with Kilgore and some other guys. Well, as I think I think you've Maybe done. Like, I think. I think JC, I mean, the, I've asked about this one time, and the word I got was basically they duplicated what they did last year. Like, they've got a group of kids that they're, they're, they're going to want to bring them along, but they're very talented, and they're capable of handling whatever's thrown them their way. And if, if you get into a situation in the middle of the season next year where you got to play some of these guys, they're going to feel good about that based on athleticism alone. Absolutely. I mean, Kilgore, Zabari Sandy from Washington, D.C. is another guy uh, that's going to be pretty good next year. And, um, you know, I I think that they've got, uh, shoot, Judge Collier is a pretty good player, right? Yeah, he Um, is. So you got some some guys. I mean, Corey Swain, I didn't mention him. He's elite. Um, (laughs) So we'll see sort of what happens. Yeah, he's a really good player. So I can't believe I forgot about him. But, yeah, and I think Torian Gray – does a great job of preparing players to get ready. I think, yeah, I think guys naturally get better on their own, but when you, would you have a coach that can kind of advance, uh, advance, I guess, advance their development, uh, quicker. Um, I think it's a tremendous advantage. And, and I saw him do it at Virginia tech, man. They, they go into a season. They'd be starting some three-star freshman. You'd never heard of the Next thing you know, he's on draft boards for the, you know, in two years, you know, that kind of thing. I saw him do it at Florida. Uh, he's just, I, I, I sincerely believe he's one of the best, if not the best defensive backs coach in the United States uh, of America. Marshawn Lloyd hasn't found a home yet. Still don't think, they're particularly begging him to come back. Can't rule it out. Don't really think it's likely. Your thoughts? Well, look, I, I got uh, I got the the story on this uh, a few days ago, uh, and it is uh, I, I was lucky to get it, and and it is not something I'll tell all of you at all that I will publicize. Uh, <laughs> Well, let's put it this way. I would be beyond shocked of anything that's happened in the Shane Beamer area era to see this kid back in Columbia. We'll leave it there. Yeah, um, I'm shocked. Don't don't think it's gonna happen. Awesome. I kind of feel like no, there's nothing there's nothing else to say. Uh, let's just put it. I mean I feel like that uh, I I'd, I'd feel better about that than if he came back, just to be honest. Just knowing what I know about the situation. And I probably honest to God. Because I've yeah. I've not been really good about following up in the last couple of weeks, I, I probably don't know as much as you do, but uh, I know enough to kind of think. Well, uh, probably just better off without the guy. I, I think. But uh, anyway, well, we're well, going to know, one of one of the th- I know we got to get a break, but one one of the things that I think people a lot of people have learned 
Maybe some haven't yet, but they're starting to figure it out here. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more about Shane, you know, as the show kind of moves on. She, she, when when Shane's on the camera, uh, when he's on an interview, you know, we, we all know him. He, he is an, just an excellent person. Um, and even when he's off camera, I'm, he's a great, great, great person. But one of the one of the sneaky assets and traits that he has is don't burn that bridge with him. And, you know, talk, be honest with him. And, and he doesn't like it when you're not. And you'll hear about it. So, you know, that's when you're – when you set fire to that bridge, you might as well burn it down because it's, it's, it's just how he is. You know, he's – what is that saying? All we got, all we need, whatever that crap is. Oh, that's God, that's all we need. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of his mentality without coming out and saying it. And I think that's something that needs to continue. He's, he's just wonderful about that. Yeah, I don't believe it. You know, and then uh, – Spur used to say, well, wouldn't with you or without you? Shoot. <laughs> yeah, put the now, Spur, here. Spur was a little bit extreme about it. Oh, Victor Hampton, you want to go pro? Great. Shoot. Uh, he's not going to get drafted and you have one corner. Oh, I didn't realize that. Coach Ward, are we going to be okay at corner? Oh, uh, yeah, our defense is going to be better <laughs> in 2014 and 2013. We don't need Vic Hampton. All right, I'll shoot Vic. I'll go. Good luck to you. Shoot. Go get. Don't call ball job, plays man. next year. Head ball. I'm making a movie with Kenny Chesney. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that, that's the thing. So, Steve. yeah, he uh, was he was awesome. But I think Bieber's got a little of that in him. Well, we'll oh, live yeah. here without you, you know. And I think that's that's the deal. Love it. It's good stuff. Uh, Saunders, like, hey, you like that fourth three four defense? Remember after that game against A and M, I kept hearing about our three four defense. You guys want like that defense? Six hundred and sixty yards. And about six years prior to that, well, I don't know what happened. Somebody go get Ron Cooper. Go get, go get, get Coach Cooper out of here. What, what happened on that last play? Oh. Remember, we're watching this go ended. Did he just call his defensive backs coach into this press conference to answer his question? Coach Cooper was like, coach, I thought Ron handled it really well, but yeah, he uh, he's like, oh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, well, that's a, you know, Ron Cooper, honest to God, used to be a head coach. I mean, he, if anybody could have handled it, it was Coach Cooper. Well, Steve like, knew that too. Wasn't like he was hauling Robert Gillespie out there to talk about the running backs one year removed from being a GA. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was something else. I'll never forget that. Anyway, we have to uh, have to get to a break. We'll be right back inside the Game Coxes Show with Jamie Bradford on our return episode. Rolls on. Hey man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues, and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. Oh, I feel that, man. My head hurts, but I have a good lead on a good idea. I'm calling your boy Matthew Odom today from Heritage Digital. Heritage Digital is an IT firm that specializes in making sure your IT network runs like a dream. If you have one or 500 employees, it doesn't matter. They do it all for one monthly fee and have clients from South Carolina all the way to California. Yeah, I heard that monthly fee's low too, so I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Uh, Do you have 843-699-1001 as Matt's contact number? Yeah, man, I sure do that, or you can go to heritagedigital.com. Man, I hear they do a no-cost assessment. Boy, this will help me. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) I'm getting on that and encouraging everyone else to do the same. Heritage Digital, 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com, a proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. You can't handle the truth. Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support Inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with fan plans. Yep, time to get back to the show. Shoot. All right, my man. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. The show is brought to you by Express Sundrums in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662. Set up a no con- uh, no obligation consultation. Damn, I've been hitting that all morning, Gus. Mm, no obligation consultation. <laughs> That's like that new, there's a new Taylor Swift song where she rhymes like 16 straight words. And I was like, the prices and vices and dices and my, then she says it's me. 
which is the truest line she's ever said. <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. She's the problem. So she, it's me. Oh so, yeah. So, so she rhymes seventeen words straight, which is like, wow. You're like, is this is a, it's like it's like Nelly or something. And then she goes into, I'm the problem. It's me. And I'm like, God, that's a beautiful song. Oh, I know. You know, I think about Gwen Stefani when I think about her because it only took Gwen Stefani one you know, album, the trash, her ex. And <laughs> I think I still, I still, she's got a long way to go to get a long, Alanis Morissette level with like the angst that got well, poured yeah, into one album. Yeah, whoa, yeah, but, right. but Alanis yeah. just poured it all out. She's like, I'm pouring this all out for my former homie or hubby or whatever. And then that, then she went to crap. I mean, at least Taylor has more experiences, but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Make, 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 Adair mentions I'm about I'm mentioning Taylor Swift a lot today. I don't know why. I can't explain it. He's a closet it's, Swifty. It's, what are you going to do? But it, it's it's her. The problem is her. So anyway, did you, did you go ahead. Phil. On a, did you get hosed on a couple of tickets or something? Was going right. I was <laughs> yeah, my daughter said she wanted them for Christmas. I was like, nobody got any for Christmas. Is my understanding. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. A lump of coal or other than that. You know, no, 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 nobody in my house was clamoring for the Taylor Swift tickets. I'm just, I, I was just back sitting back laughing. Well, yeah, you know. for sure. Because it's her. She's the problem. It's her. Anyway, I just kind of thought she finally admitted it. I was yeah, like, it only took twelve be, albums, right? Is it's that gonna be cathartic <laughs> after all that? Hey, I uh, I don't listen to Taylor Swift, but I'll give, her, <laughs> I'll, I'll give her a lot of credit. She's only worth about a billion dollars. So right? She's, yeah, she's yeah. been. I'll yeah. take. You want to hear a quick story on Taylor Swift? This will take one minute. And back to the show. Not even that. In two thousand and eight. There's a guy who, at the time, nobody had ever heard of, except for, of course, me and my guys, at least in our neck of the woods. His name was Eric Church. He was uh, he was the opener for a, uh, a band called Ras <laughs> Rascal Flats. I've heard two, this before. Two it's totally awesome. opposite ends of the spectrum in country music. And Chief, twice in the Northeast, played too long, played too loud. And they said, if you do it again, you're out of here. And he said, oh, you're going to threaten me. All right, that sounds good. Well, he played too long, 45 minutes too long in New York City. And he played really loud. He walked off stage and Rascal Flatts kicked him off tour. And he followed them around to the rest of their tour. And if you had a ticket to Rascal Flatts, you could get into these little dumpy dive bars to watch Eric Church and his band. But they replaced him on tour with somebody that nobody else had ever heard of either, named Taylor Swift. And only... <laughs> A little while after that, she became what she became. So she can thank Eric Church for getting kicked off to her for her opportunity. Of course, it worked out for the Chief as well. Yeah, uh, I think I think she should God sing a song you. about Eric Church. God yeah. bless you, Chief. Yeah, that's, hey, that's, he's that's, staring at me right here, so I had to. <laughs> through, his, through his Ray Bands, no doubt. Yeah. Through his Ray Bands. Yeah, yeah, that was our, that was our, that was our one. Mr. Night. Andrew says, "Seems like JC seems like a big Red album guy." Mm. I don't know about that. What is a Red album? Yeah, she had an album called Red. That was, oh. I guess it was one of her breakthroughs. I don't know. All right. KFC says, is Purdue that bad or is LSU that good? I didn't know Purdue that was had as many players out as they yeah. did. Yeah, yeah that, that was that decimated. That was, just, <laughs> that, was one, that was one of those bowl games you don't want to see for those reasons. No. It was yeah. terrible. Uh, good, good for everybody. Tulane and Southern Cal were playing. Good for Tulane, man. That was a great game. That was so cool to see that happen, especially the way it did in the last five minutes. Yeah, uh, last. Your, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. God bless Southern Cal. And for those that don't like the mercenaries in college football these days, that whole entire team uh, on the, the Trojans' end of it, most of the key players were, uh, you know, transfers. Uh, and then and for Tulane. <laughs> Head coach included. Most of the guys on Tulane when it were part of a two and ten juggernaut yeah. last year. <laughs> uh, Chris Hampton, former Gamecock. Uh, yep. Travis Robertson, former Gamecock on that staff. Yeah, Willie Travis. Fritz, who I think is an outstanding coach. And I thought that was interesting because Travian just left and went down there maybe a month ago, and he was coaching in the game. He was down mm -hmm. on the sideline. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, he's a really good player. So, uh, uh, Willie Willie Fritz is a really good coach. Uh, his daughter used to be the chief sports anchor at Channel 2 in Charleston, Laney. And then she left and went somewhere. I uh, was yeah. not aware of that. <sighs> didn't know that was – I knew Laney Fred. I didn't know that was Willie's daughter. Willie's so daughter. that's yeah. interesting. All right, cool. Um, so you talked about the recruiting class the day that you know, I had to 
bolt out. <laughs> um, I thought, Jamie, for this Saturday, I mentioned this earlier, it, it kind of went really well. I mean, really, if you think about it, they didn't really lose anybody. Got just They got Lenora Sellers. Um, yep. You know, I know there's, with the portal and all that, there's some uh, uh, people that they'd like to have from that end. Also, Nick Harbor is another guy that, um, you know, that we, uh, everybody's kind of looking at. But uh, I, I thought, all things considered, uh, shoot, uh, I felt that the, the signing day was was relatively uh, positive for the Gamecocks. Well, I, I you know, I, I for the most part, I did too. I, I think that they're still, you know, if they can find the linebacker, they'll probably take one. Um, certainly still going to keep their eyes out for a running back. I, I got a feeling they're going to take a running back. Uh, so we'll, we'll certainly keep our eyes on that. They might end up having to take a wide receiver in the portal and things like that as well. But uh, when it comes to, but you know, if you just start with the high school guys before you get to the transfers, you know, I, I personally feel like the, the, the trenches was, you know, really where they were focused uh, and they nailed it. I mean, they just nailed it uh, on both sides there. You, you got a lot of dudes on the defensive side that you're going to have to uh, develop, but they're kids who will probably develop a little bit quicker than others. Um, and then you've got a bunch of guys on the offensive line who are going to probably have a chance to play sooner than later just because they're, they're pretty good, um, which generally here, it's rare. Let's put it that way. It's rare that that happens here, right? So uh, you see it at Bama, you see it at Georgia, you, you see it at the traditional schools that have these linemen that all send off to the NFL, uh, it, it doesn't happen as often in Columbia, but I think they've got some guys that can do that. One of the guys that I'm most interested to see, and it's really based on what you've told me, JC, because of your short, uh, sources, is the uh, Shivers kid who had originally committed to Vanderbilt and then decommitted and now is in Columbia. And, um, you know, after hearing Shane talk about him a little bit and 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 knowing what, you know, you've said both publicly and privately, you know, he's a guy I think who's kind of – because he doesn't have the the four star and the and the, and all the commitment tracking and all that stuff like Big Tree and Marquee being an in state guy and those type dudes, I think he's kind of slid under the radar. So I'm really excited to see him. He's got a he's got a big body where they're gonna you're gonna see him lose weight first and then he'll and then he'll gain it. Um, you know, he's six seven two ninety five and a lot of it's just baby fat. So he's probably gonna shave ten or twelve pounds and then he's gonna pick up twenty or thirty pretty quick. So you know that's gonna be neat to see. Um, you mentioned a lot of the secondary guys earlier, and and I like the running back. You know, running backs are kind of a dime a dozen um, these days. You know, I mean, look at the NFL draft. I mean, they don't even draft them in the first round anymore. So it's really about finding the running back that fits your system the best. I was reading something on your board the other day, yesterday maybe, about a transfer from Florida State, and according to some of the experts uh, on the Big Spur, uh, this kid doesn't, doesn't have the size to play in the SEC, and I'm just – okay. Um, but, um, you know, it's not about that anymore. This game is built on speed. Yes, running backs have to be able to run through tackles and get a yard if, you, if it's third or fourth and one. Like, you have to have all of that in the SEC. I understand it. But body types have changed. you got to be careful about pegging people in corners when they shouldn't be. So, overall, I liked it. Um, I thought it was good. Um, got the news of the seller stuff, I think, the Tuesday before he came out publicly. Um, and, and so that was pretty exciting. Uh, I know a couple of kids that played against him in the, uh, in the shrine bowl, best player on the field, both of them. They said, you know, when he's back there, he's best quarterback we've seen best player on the field, got a chance to be pretty good. So excited about that. And, um, you know, maybe they'll land another couple here coming up in February. I know that they've got a pretty good chance to do it. Yeah. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, Nana sports chat box. Uh, Greg wants to know, JB, when we, can, can we expect your next solo podcast gig? Oh, can you think of the works there? Yeah. Uh, well, you, it's not they solo. You, man. Um, yeah, no, solo's uh, a lot of work and, uh, and, uh, appreciate that, but I enjoy doing this and jumping on with Bill and see what else happens. Yeah. Frank says, Trey Sanders running back from Alabama. He was a uh, five-star guy. I always thought Trey was a pretty good receiver out of the backfield. It actually reminds me a little bit running style wise of um gosh, he's the kid that went to Florida State or to Oregon State that was here in 2020 that finally was good. Deshaun uh, Deshaun Fenway. 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 Um, 
now he didn't have the problem where he kind of stood up and didn't get low enough like Deshaun did, and they had to kind of coach that at him. But it, kind of a similar skill set. Um, Bama, he got hurt, and they got Bama's got two guys coming in this year, folks. That are, and they got Justice Haynes and Richard Young. I was like, wow. I guess it got lost on me until last sign of day that those two guys were coming in. That's I, why I think I, Saban's had enough. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm like, because mm. I, I called my the day Marshawn left. I was like, because somebody in the in the building had said we think he may be going to Bama, and I was like, really? No. I saw and I, my my buddy at Bama like laughed at me. They're like, because <laughs> these two guys are, are so good. And they got players there. Um, so so you know Trey could be a guy. I mean, I would. I'd look into him, um, you know, if he was willing to come in and work. Uh, Sonny says Lavoisier Carroll will be a star in the backfield. He's, he's got a ways to go. He's a talented yeah. kid. I'm, I'm not trying to – this – this. I don't want to poo-poo on something because I'm I'm not the head coach and I'm not Montario Hardesty or anything like that. But um, I know you've heard it, JC. He, he, he's got a ways to go. Uh, he's yeah. He's, the, the me- mental aspect of the game and, and it continuing to make that transition back. Uh, now, um, all this, there's a, you got to remember now, he, there's a new OC in town. And so, you know, it, it's not going to be like, look, look what Rashad Amos went through trying to pick up this offense. I mean, hell, you got guys who played 13 games this year still didn't know the offense. So, so like you, 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 you you're going to probably see some names in the spring. This is my prediction just based on the little intel I've got. Um, but you're probably going to see some names that flash in the spring that you haven't seen before. So, and that's just because they're, they're, they're changing some stuff here. You know, it's, I mean, from, from language to the, the playbook to positions, I mean, they, they're, there's going to be some different stuff going on. It's going to open some doors for some other guys. But a guy like Vasquez Carroll, he's got a ways to go. He's got to figure it out. And uh, the spring is it, like – if you want to circle guys in the spring, circle guys in the spring like Lavasse Carroll. Like, keep a close eye and let, let's see how close he gets to to really being uh, kind of an impact player. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll see, and, and it, so much will change definitely with that. So, you know, we'll see kind of uh, how that goes. Contrell says, "Like this is an interesting player comparison, Donovan mm-hmm. McNabb for the North Sellers." I. I think he's somewhere between maybe McNabb and like Dondreal Pinkins. Let's hope he's more like McNabb. <laughs> oh, every, everybody's going to take McNabb in that scenario, man. <laughs> I mean, no offense to Dondreal, who's a hell of a football coach and an even better person, but it, he went. He, you know, he did what he could. I mean, he Luke tried him, to recreate the Notre Dame offense, you know. It size in a rocket arm, you know, but that, that, that ball would come out about 98 miles an hour. Yeah, you didn't know where it was <laughs> hit, going up. <laughs> hit Troy Williamson in the face mask. Boom! He goes straight 10 feet up in the air, you know? Yeah. He, he, was, he, was, he was built like a fullback, man. That was crazy. Really, man. Really, yeah. Really good. Man, he had some good moments. I'll never – he was the victim was, of one. That six-year span at Carolina – um, four, four, five-year span at Carolina. Well, I guess six seasons, two to seven, it was really weird with the quarterback stuff. You had you had you had Dondrell, you had Corey, and then you know, Steve, yeah, yeah, and then and then you then Steve plugs in Savell after Savell had been moved to safety, and it was just kind of Blake weird. Mitchell's there, Blake and Mitchell's everybody there. wanted everybody wanted Mike Rath to have another year of eligibility, Spurs first well, year, and they they Mike Rath. I don't think a lot of people understand how good Mike Rath was. Mike could play. Um, I think I under Steve Spurrier, Spurrier, he would have been oh, really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Really, really good. So, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, he, Mike Rath, that, that was that was a weird time. Chris Smelly takes over for Mitchell later. Garcia comes in, and then it kind of stabilized. You know, Steven and then Connor and then Dylan. But, uh, but it was the, the end of Holtz beginning of Spurrier, a lot of really good players, a lot of talent, but never seemed to be that, that one guy. I, I think know? that they, they really screwed the pooch. Uh, they should have left Antonio Hefner in there after that Auburn game. 
I mean, I hate to be yelling at my guy. You know, yeah, man. Yeah, Spurrier, Spurrier talked about it. He's like, shoot, I should just had like four plays and called them in a lot of different formations. <laughs> he said I had a big. He said I gave him like twenty things on a wristband. He's like, shoot, you can't. I think if if there was a lonelier place in the world that night than inside of Antonio Helmets, uh, Antonio Hefner's cleats, I would hate to be wherever that could possibly be. I felt so bad for that kid in, in that game because he didn't have a clue of what was going and on. All, Auburn was ready to number one for Tuberville wanted to take a, a bite out of his old golfing buddy's butt because he looked. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think Tommy Tuberville beat Spurrier golf very often. Uh, that was one. Plus, you had the Kenny Irons factor. Uh, so Auburn was yeah. fired up to come beat them. I was at that game. That's bad. To a hell of unusual a, when you transferring to your yeah. rival was very unusual. Yeah, yeah, that was that was different from the a team on the schedule. But I uh, went to a hell of a karaoke party at this uh, travel lodge in Opelika the night before. Oh. Oh. Um, and what what was interesting about that was it was seventy percent Bama fans. Well, that was before meth was invented, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. There wasn't even Opa like a travel lodge, Alabama. Dude, I got, I got the cheapest travel lodge with. <laughs> I've got the cheapest hotel because my buddy drove down from South Carolina. I was in Nashville at the time. I got the cheapest hotel I could find. Nineteen dollars. Sounds like it. Yeah. But it had a bar, and it was one of the old school bars with like the velvet carpet and the Christmas lights around the bar. And they just uh, happened to have karaoke. And me and my buddy, I mean, he's heck, he's gotten married twice and has car- has had karaoke at both. So we're, we're big into that, right? So we go in there and 70% of the crowd's like, roll tide, roll tide. I'll never forget, Florida played Alabama that day, and Bama actually had a pretty good team that year, and Urban Meyer uh, took his first Florida team out there. And when you walk through the, the parking lots at Auburn, you heard the Alabama broadcast, like, over, like, aloud. Everybody was listening to it or watching it. I mean, you heard Eli Gold calling the Bama game over to the parking lot. And Bama beat him 31 to put, beat him pretty good. And there was like this silence. Like you could literally, you didn't hear anybody yelling war eagle, whatever. Then he got in the stadium and it was louder than you know what. <laughs> but uh, I've ne- I'll never forget the uh, the parking lot there. Quantrell says $19 for a hotel. It sounds like a blo- brothel. Well, it was 2000. It was 20 years, you know, 17 years ago. We didn't have inflation. No. No, we we had uh, we had Steve Spurrier. You meant that was the year after we. I was at I was at this game when we went to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama in 04. Uh, Twenty. That was a Savelle Newton game. That was a heck of a Savelle yeah. Newton. Savelle was really good, yeah. really good that day. So was the game kind defense. I was a, I was a quiet Alabama. I was a quiet stadium there. I, I did not go to that one in Tuscaloosa. I went in 09 and I went in 2000. Those, those are my two experiences getting out of that getting out of that stadium. Worst experiences I've ever had. And uh, I, I heard some of you didn't get out of the Gator Bowl pretty quick the other day. Oh, but, uh, no, that, that was brutal. The Gator Bowl, uh, where we were sitting, ran out of food in the second quarter. Except all they had was hot dogs. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. I literally – Well, if you're – I said, you, you got to be kidding me. What about the next one? She said, the whole side is out, sir. I said, well, give me 10 freaking hot dogs then because I got to feed – I mean <laughs> – I got kids to feed. <laughs> give, give me 10 hot dogs. It was all out. They were out of everything. I mean, hot dogs. If you're going to run out of something and have one thing left, hot dogs, you know, that's according to my in game drinking strategy before they sold beer in the stadium. Because that's what I do. Yeah. You go, you eat a little chicken at the tailgate, you get in there, you sit down, you have a Coca Cola. Halftime, I'd eat a hot dog. By the fourth quarter, I'm fine, ready to drive home, get a piece of cold Bojangles chicken. I'm ready to go back to Greenville. I was yeah. about I was about to send Steve Fink a text to say slap me on the media list because I got to <laughs> I got to get something to eat. Slap <laughs> me on that media hey, list. I I didn't apply for my uh, media pass, but damn if I don't need it now. Uh, I mean, it was the one thing I'll say about. Well, we probably we need to hit a break. Are we late for break? We need to get that. Get that ah, go ahead and finish this one point. Then we we'll I'll, I'll, I'll the one thing I'll say: the fans in Jacksonville were. I mean, beyond outstanding. It was all garnet and black. I, with that said, and I got told this at two different bars on Jacksonville Beach the night we were there. The first place we were at, Sneakers, the big get-together. They had four bartenders, and there was probably like 4,000 people in this place. I mean, it was enormous. Like, it looked like Vegas. You had projectors everywhere. 
And they had four bartenders walking around the main bar and two outside. We waited 45 minutes. Now, I did order two doubles. Holy smokes, like no wonder. I mean, they they knew we were waiting, so they had no issues with granting pretty much all vodka. I said, do you mind if I have any cranberry? Because I ordered <laughs> um, and, um, and And that was understaffed. And then the next place we went, totally understaffed. And I asked the girl, I was like, are you two the only people here? And she said, I'll be honest with you. She was like, we only scheduled two people. Like, did not expect this. I said, there were two pep rallies today on Jacksonville Beach. Y'all didn't think that thousands of people might walk in these places? I mean, the whole place was understaffed. Like, we went somewhere after the game that night. Totally understaffed. Jacksonville, the establishments themselves kind of screwed it up. The bowl game screwed up a lot of the parking and certainly some of the food on the inside. Uh, but the fans were, were, were outstanding. Oh, my God. They're having a, the national championship in Los Angeles this year. Um, no tailgating at all. Really? That's no so tailgating is really? allowed in SoFi. Lord. And Georgia's going to be – oh, yeah. my God. Half the state's going to be in an L.A. prison. I mean, that's, that is – we got in trouble in the – anybody else in the tailgaters lot? We got in trouble for throwing the football. The guy that came up told me not to throw the football smelled like literally he had just jumped out of a bag of weed and i looked at him <laughs> and i i said i tell you what if you don't tell on me i won't tell on you how does that sound and uh he you know he didn't like that they 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 chewed us out there i walked into the stadium the girl first bartender wouldn't give me a drink i said why she said you've had too much i said i've had three today that was literally it and i was like number one I said, no, that's number one. Number two, who are you to determine? Call that police officer over here. Let's let's have a talk about it. She goes, oh, okay, I'll give you one. I was like, yeah, okay. She probably she probably thought you looked like somebody else, man. I don't know. All right, uh, we do have to get a break now. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, let's talk about crappy stadium experiences. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll write a book on it and we'll put it. Why am I just not surprised that SoFi Stadium is? I mean, they're, they don't want to tell you that's. Ah, oh, man, I wouldn't even want to go. That's embarrassing. Yeah. All those dog fans too. I mean, T and you know TCU. Like everybody who even cares about TCU is going to be there. I mean, I think that kind of sucks. You know, the mentality is going to be, but I can't put forty thousand. <coughs> is that a good yeah. thing or what's going on? No, I mean, apparently it's just the rules at SoFi, and I'm like, that thing's out kind of in uh, Inglewood. There's there's parking. I mean, it's not it's not like it's not it's kind of a complex, you know. Um, that sucks. So yeah. anyway, all yeah. right, we got to get a break. We'll be right back. If you're game. looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Gamecocks. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. What's up, Gamecock fans? This is Pitcher Noah Hall. If you want some delicious food for your event, I suggest visiting nanasports.com today to find out what they all have to offer. It's really good southern cuisine based out of Charlotte, my hometown. I hope you guys go check it out. Go Cox and go Nanas. I've been expecting you, Mr. Powers. Sometime in the near future, there's a good chance I'll move back to my home area of the upstate of South Carolina. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody I would use to help me find a new home except Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane, located in my hometown of Spartanburg, Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a diehard Gamecock. 864-414-5271. Give Cindy a call. 864-414-5271. A proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. I Help Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and I Help Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. 
gamecocks.com. How can I help you? Hey, Mo Cabe here from Carolina Gamecocks. You're listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back to the final segment of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Coming off of our hiatus, happy to be back. Glad to have everybody back with us. Yeah. Brought to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to schedule a no-obligation consultation about your potential backyard. What is that? Oh, I hear clicking again, JC. I think your mic is on the doing that thing again. I'm hearing it through the... Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm here. Yep. Test. Anyway, you're at, 76. Uh, you're, you're jumping in and out there. Um, unplug that mic and plug it back in real quick. See if that. All happens. right, hang on. Press it. Click. In the meantime, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. While about he's gone. About Dodgers, huh? Yeah, about that. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. When I unplugged. Yeah, he's still Come on. Out of there. Yeah, it's either that or like it was just the latency in your uh, internet, but now it's yeah back to mic issues. We dealt with this before the show, which we thought we had it fixed, but you never know. New mic, yeah. you gotta we gotta work it out. Yeah, it might be. Uh, 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 yeah, it's in Inglewood, not downtown. Yeah. Oh, South yeah. Central. No. Yeah. <laughs> Did the Rams not have tailgate in the Chargers? Good question. I don't really care much for the state of California, so whatever they want to do. Someone needs to take a big piece of scissors and just cut them right off. <laughs> big piece of scissors. Um, <laughs> not into that. Hey, can um, I? We haven't had a. I don't know if you got anything else on the agenda. I know we're running out of time, but the um, I've had a lot of <clears throat> for whatever reason since the bowl game. Most of the conversations have been around Shane. And the penalty and how he was acting on the sidelines and all this stuff. Am I in a boat of my own where I mean he the guy got one penalty in 13 games for yelling at officials, one. And and Shane pretty much called him out after the game. Am I the only one that is in favor of hey, first of all, I like how he defends his program. Second of all, coach the way that you coach. I mean, you know, I mean we told Dabo for how long he was an idiot for doing what he did. It kind of worked out. He's got a bunch of rings to show for it. I mean, did anybody else have an issue with the way Shane acted? I thought he was – first of all, somebody said to me two days ago, they said, uh, he cost his team points. I said, no, he didn't. He shouldn't have got a flag for that. That's ridiculous. Like, you don't throw a flag there anyways unless Shane runs out and literally says something bad about your mama. I mean, that's – there's no reason for that. That's what I was like. I was like, how overly sensitive is this ref <laughs> that we've been flagged 15 yards for this? I mean, you can't – surely you've heard worse than well, what was going on from Shane. And when Shane said it after the game and it clicked with me, and I've gone back and watched it since, and uh, but but it did click with me when he said it after the game. I was like, I remember seeing a lot of that. I kept wondering what was going on. I thought maybe there was a field issue or something because there were – the officials kept turning around and just talking to him mm-hmm. and other coaches. I'm like, what are they talking about? But you know you don't really pay attention to it, and then after the game, he he was like, oh, they kept. I don't know what they were telling him how to coach. I don't know what they're doing, but you can't have that crap. If you're if you're officiating a bowl game, it's because generally you're a pretty good official. You can't have that. So hopefully, and get rid of it. But that was ridiculous. Think about that problem with that. Uh, in fact, I'd probably strongly disagree with anybody that that wanted to come down on Beamer about that. I mean, uh, it was not the best officiated football game in the world. There's some very quiet things. And I, I sort of thought um, Shane's comments after the game were spot on about, I mean, when you're sitting there and you're thankful for SEC officiating crews. <laughs> yeah. And remember, you're probably, too, you know, you're, you're, remember you're, you're, they had them for all 12 games. You have them in conference. You have them for, for your not, um, you know, at, at home. You know, they they had them there for their for those non cons, and then they took them to Clemson. So they had them for all twelve games. Interesting. That's right. Yeah, kind of crazy. Uh, but anyway, that uh, that's the deal. There. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. I, I, is that out there? So because I haven't. Uh, 
after the game it was yeah for a few days like people were just what you think about beamer you know and i was like that's what we're talking about i mean (laughs) okay yeah it didn't bother me i'm kind of thought he was as excellent as he always is Mm -hmm. i don't know you go out there and coach him you would you how about we judge you yeah how about about i throw a flag at your desk while you're selling insurance dude the biggest south meltdown i've ever seen probably in the last says must have not carolina at auburn during the iron bowl <laughs> do you yeah. remember that yeah uh he yeah. melted down so bad there were some wonder because everybody probably pretty much for i think we are job at carolina there, there are people wondering if he would not get the job because of that I've never, i mean he dude was t rob to pull it back you know gus Arms full, just an embarrassment. Then, Bama got our field. Then, Bama kicks the field goal and goes after it, after it again, you know. So, and uh, that's that's on that's on YouTube. <laughs> that's a huge meltdown. It should do anything like that in that game. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, and I, I, I respected Muschamp for doing it too. So, um, uh, yeah. anyway, guys, we, we can't do anything about, I'm not getting any, any, uh, any popping or anything in my headset. I got a little bit there for a while. Yeah. But, it's um, still coming through, but that's all right. I'm, I'm sure that was a great story. You just told <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> no, I picked up most of it. Yeah, we did, we did. I was just taking yeah. advantage of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you yeah. guys were clicking at my headset too, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's the wire for this, but I thought we had fixed. Sometimes yeah, you, uh, sometimes you got to dip out of the program. It happened to Darren and I from time to time. You just got to restart it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it could be a stream yard thing. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this, this is a, I changed mics because the other one had such bad for the old ball. Um, um, the, the, uh, when, um, the other one literally up and it going boring. Yeah. And I was like, well, so I got this new. Phil, uh, maybe see if you can yeah, yeah. zero I'm him out. To, I'm gonna try to pull him out. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Try we'll, to we'll restart him and put him back. And, uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, Are you and, better now, JC? Check, maybe check, maybe one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Well, a little bit better. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He might. He might have to cancel out on his end, but it's okay. He only got about a minute and a half left. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. You, hey, you just there and look get out of here. Let's take it home. Yes. <laughs> Uh, y'all have a good one now because I don't want to. Uh, pop audio I'm gonna get out. All right, okay. we'll talk to you later, brother. <laughs> yep. Phil, and we can that, uh, we'll wrap it up too, we'll, man. We'll JB, it's, handle uh, this last minute or so, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we we did a whole you know two hours the other day, so we'll pull it together. Yeah, again. that's I've yeah. done this long enough. I think we can figure it out. But I, I'll say on behalf of everybody uh, to to kind of wrap it up because this is y'all's first show of the new year. Um, yeah, man. Outstanding. Uh, first of all, for you and, and JC, uh, the program was just outstanding from when y'all launched it last year. And I know it helped a lot of people get through football season. And now we're into hoops. Um, didn't get to that today. Got baseball coming up. A lot of excitement around that team. Um, but then as it pertains to the football program itself, it was a it was a I would call it a great year because of what they've been through for the last little while. Uh, mm-hmm. Eight is is not the number. You know, you certainly want to be two or three higher than that if you can at each season. Um, but, you know, you beat Kentucky and nobody thought you would. You you, you did beat A&M regardless of how good or bad they are. You hadn't beat them before, and you needed to end that. They did. And then you throttled Tennessee and embarrassed them on national television, kept them out of the playoff. And then you, uh, you beat Clemson when nobody thought you would again. So – um, you know, with all that said, getting eight wins, just outstanding for Gamecock football. And I think that 23 has a chance to be just as good, if not better. And um, I think that the next couple of weeks is going to be pretty interesting. And hopefully people will continue to follow along. And um, I think it'll be I think it'll be better than people think that it will maybe right now, too. So uh, oh, yeah. excited mm-hmm. about it. No doubt. 
Yeah, for sure. Trajectory is always, you know, pointing up right now. I think even with the loss, you know, in the bowl game, it's still the way you did it. You fought hard. You know, everybody knows you got a young and depleted team out there, you know, giving it absolutely everything they had. And you could see that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think it's crazy that people were, you know, kind of getting down on Shane. I mean, you know, he's the, the emotional center of this team. And if, you know, and, and they reflect that. I mean, they are a direct reflection of his passion for this program. And, yeah. you know, it's it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it really is. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, generally uh, that, that team follows along with him. And um, mm -hmm. that's that's why they've won a lot of games. So looking forward to, to seeing what it looks like. And to all the folks that made it to Jacksonville, I say this as your peer, not as some radio guy. Very, very well done. Uh, that was uh, as good as I think I've seen. Uh, maybe since the Capital One Bowl in 2012, um, if not, certainly the Outback Bowls in, in Tampa. That first and second Outback Bowl were just slammed with people, and that was pretty neat to see again. So good stuff. For sure. Yep. It came through on the TV, too. Everybody did their part. But, um, yeah, appreciate everyone who stuck there with us through our hiatus. We'll wrap up uh, the first show of the new year. Thank you, JB, for joining us as always on Wednesday. Well, mm -hmm. uh, we got some other things in the works here if, as we move forward through the the non football season <laughs> of our year, and uh, everybody will be excited. Happy to have everybody back, and we will see you all tomorrow. <laughs>